Good evening, Lake Ori, and welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina. Um, I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite eras in baseball, and that was a baseball expansion in the 50s and the 60s. The reason why it's one of my favorite eras in baseball is because one of the big things I like to talk about is with leagues. It, I'd like to talk about leagues, realignments, expansions. You can often hear me talk about this when it comes to high school athletics or college athletics. I love talking about realignment and um, I love talking about expansion, also disbandment and also forming other leagues. Um, I wanted to talk about with the baseball expansion because this was one of my favorite eras in baseball. Now, from 1901 to about 1953, there were two leagues, the American League and the National League. There still is to this day. But there was only eight teams in both. Um, in the American League, it was the Detroit Tigers, the Chicago White Sox, the Cleveland Indians, the New York Yankees, the Boston Red Sox, the Philadelphia Athletics, the St. Louis Browns, and the Washington Senators. In the National League, it was the Pittsburgh Pirates, Chicago Cubs, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, Philadelphia Phillies, the Boston Braves, the New York Giants, and the Brooklyn Dodgers. Notice how they were all throughout in that northeast area. So you had, you had it in um, areas of Detroit, Chicago, Cleveland, New York, Boston, St. Louis, Philadelphia, Washington, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, and Brooklyn. Pretty much, pretty much the whole northeast area. So the league from 1901 to 1953, it was those 16 teams into eight league divisions. Now there was also competition at that time. You had the, the Negro Leagues that was going on as well. They were in business. They were in business from 1920 to, to 1951. Um, also you had the Cuban League that was going on for, that took place from 1878 and ending until 1961. Um, major changes took place in the between 1953 to 1960 started with the the Boston Braves the at the time the Boston Braves were the oldest franchise between them and the Boston Red Sox but uh, the Red Sox were more popular also the rivalry the Red Sox had with the Yankees was also a big reason it's important to note that um, the American League teams for the most part were more popular with fans. They were seen as the higher division than the National League. You also had these competition, this competition for fans. Um, Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, St. Louis, each of those teams had two teams. In the New York area you actually had three teams competing. So you have that competition for fans when you're going to the ballpark and that caused a, that caused a lot of financial and that caused a lot of um, um, of competition not just in games but also for fans so really the the the, the changes started to begin with the Boston Braves um, they went to Milwaukee in 1953 and um, they were known as the Milwaukee Braves and um, so Boston, the Red Sox ended up winning out and being the only baseball team in Boston. As I made mention earlier, the Red Sox-Yankees rivalry was the major reason for why, why fans would go to more Red Sox games than Braves games. However, the perception of the National League being more popular, or the American League being more popular, was not always the case. Case in point uh, happened in St. Louis, where... The St. Louis Cardinals were more popular. They were more successful in winning world championships. The St. Louis Browns struggled to get fans. And um, the Browns would leave St. Louis and move east, would move to Baltimore and become the Orioles in 1954. So it was one of those cases where the National League team was more popular than the, than the American League team because usually the stigma was at the time that the American League team, for the most part, was more popular with the fans. Now, one place where it worked out very well was in Chicago. Um, 
the Chicago White Sox, and the Chicago Cubs. The White Sox and the Cubs were often always seen on equal footing. Both teams were very popular in Chicago. Um, the Cubs were on the north side, the White Sox were on the south side. So, pretty much both of those teams were very, it wasn't exactly like, you know, they were all in the same area, because the Cubs were on the north, the White Sox were on the south. And um, that helped in, ter in, in terms of fans um, going to games. They could go to games on the north side, or then go to games on the south side. And despite the constant scandals and curses, such as the Black Sox scandal of 1919, which was a rigged search from the Chicago White Sox and the Cincinnati Reds, and the constant Cubs curses, such as the curse of the Billy Goat. More, the more popular one seems to be the Steve Bartman one, but in this case, we're talking about the curse of Billy Goat. To this day, neither the White, the White Sox and the Cubs are still in Chicago. Both teams are still there. Neither of them moved. They're still there to this day in, in Chicago. You still have the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago White Sox. So now going to Philadelphia, um, they also had two teams. They had the Athletics and the Phillies. Um, this one was more of an odd story. The Athletics were the more popular team. However, the Phillies in the 1950s, it all changed in the 1950s when the Phillies were winning, were winning national league championships and pennants, and they were also being more successful. Also, the athletics kind of began to alienate their fans. They built a separate fence in 1935 to prevent fans from watching games for free. <laughs> a lot of times, fans would like to go, would go to games to watch on the gate for free not having to pay so they'll often go to the fence they'll go they'll watch from other areas within the ballpark um, and um, it it frustrated particularly management because they all because they all want money you all they, to get the money and they go in the game the ballpark so the uh, so the A's ended up building a, a spite fence in 1935 to prevent things like that, and it caused fans to not want to go to a athletics games, and it drove, eventually it would drive the athletics to move to Kansas City in 1955. So they were the next team to, to leave. And um, now, so now you have in Boston, you have the Red Sox. In Philadelphia, you have the Phillies. In St. Louis, you have the Cardinals. The Braves went to Milwaukee. The Athletics went to Kansas City, and and also and also the and also Saint and then the Browns went to Baltimore. You notice that slow shift to the West. You now have a team in Milwaukee. You now have a team in Kansas City. So now you have that slow move west. Now it would start getting to go more west. On our, on our next segment, in our next segment, we're going to talk about the new, three New York teams, the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Giants, when we come back to History Now here on ONTV. Hey, it's Owen TV here. Now, have you ever had the urge to create your own TV show, or just wanted to see what goes behind the scenes of making one? Well, we have just the program for you. Owen TV offers production classes, which allow you to take control and create the programs you want them to be. To get started, all you have to do is sign up for a free orientation and then register for one of our production courses. For more information, feel free to call us at 248-393-1060 or go to orionontv.org and click register now to sign up for classes. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony. Um, I wanted to talk to you now about probably the biggest impact was in New York. We, thought, we talked about Boston, we talked about St. Louis, we talked about Philadelphia, we talked about Chicago, but the biggest one was in New York. New York had three teams, which were the Yankees, the Dodgers, and the Giants. The Yankees were the biggest draw in New York. However, the, and the, as the Dodgers and the Giants both struggled to get fans to go to their games. 
despite having, despite the jo the Dodgers have, getting Jackie Robinson in 1947, there was a lot of controversy to that, and I'll save that for a later episode because I will talk about Jackie Robinson in time. Um, Walter O'Malley was the Dodgers' successful owner. Um, he was very successful in Brooklyn and later Los Angeles. Um, Ebbets Field, which was the field in Brooklyn at that time, was old and obsolete. O'Malley tried to get a new field in Brooklyn, but was turned down. Robert Moses, who was a developer in New York, wanted the Dodgers to build their new stadium in Queens, but O'Malley wanted to stay in Brooklyn. It was very challenging to get to games by car. A lot of times people had to walk to games. Um, horseback was not very was not very popular at the time, but um, it was very challenging to get to games by car. And also people were moving from the cities to the suburbs. And um, on the only way to get to games in the city was by car. And when you have people moving away from the cities, it was very much a struggle. There were states, especially in the south and the west part of the country, that were trying to get teams to move to southwest. Um, you had the emergence of jet travel. Baseball boomed after World War II. There was a lot of interest in baseball. There was um, the emergence of jet travel, obviously flying to destinations. Um, there was also economic advantages um, to have games not just in the northeast part of the country, but to expand it into areas throughout the United States. There were economic advantages to it, and it was comparable to that of the American westward movement back in the 1800s after the Louisiana Purchase and then the then the westward expansion into the western part of the United States by American settlers. Um, with the, and then while that was also going on, um, Rosalind Wyman, who was, it was Los Angeles Senator, she was trying to get the Washington Senators who were struggling to move to Los Angeles. But when O'Malley found out, he met with her, they talked, a decision was made in 1956 to move the Dodgers to Los Angeles. In the deal, Wyman promised free land to O'Malley in the Chavez Ravine area, which is today, which is today in Dodger Stadium, and um, that land was promised. And um, O'Malley agreed to move the Dodgers to Los Angeles. This move, obviously, was not very popular in Brooklyn and in New York, because they wanted to keep the Dodgers there too. But if you're not getting revenue and Los Angeles is offering a free stadium pretty much, or offering you to build a stadium for free, what are you gonna do? You take, you go, you go west, you go west and pretty much, um, you know, and that's what the, the Dodgers did. But the Dodgers also needed someone else to move with them. And Horace Stonehine, who was the owner of the Giants, they're, like the Dodgers, their stadium was also old and obsolete, and also they were unable to secure a new stadium site. Now, they considered moving to Minneapolis, which was the home of the top farm team, which was the Minneapolis Millers. Um, so O'Malley, the Dodgers owner, got involved. As I made mention, he didn't want the Dodgers to be the only team to move that far west because had the Dodgers moved west by themselves, their main rival would have been in Kansas City, and um, the travel there would not have, it would, it would not have been good travel-wise. So it made sense to have another travel partner. Um, so basically, O'Malley convinced San Francisco Mayor George Christopher to meet with Stonehine, and it was agreed that the Giants would move to San Francisco. So after the 1957 season, both the Dodgers and the Giants would move to California. Obviously, with the Dodgers to Los Angeles and the Giants to San Francisco. It shocked and saddened many in the New York area and also in the Brooklyn in Brooklyn and New York. Major League Baseball Commissioner Ford Frick 
was not happy about the meeting because they the meetings did not the meetings happened under did not happen with his blessing. Um, he wanted the Dodgers and the Giants to stay in their respective areas. Um, New York Mayor Robert Wagner set up a committee to find a team. He asked his attorney William Shea, and you'll find out the name Shea in a, in a few minutes. Um, he wanted to persuade the Phillies, the Reds, and the Pirates to move their teams to New York, but the decision was denied. So the decision was made to expand Major League Baseball's teams, breaking the antitrust agreement. So as a result, two American League teams and two National League teams were formed out of this arrangement. One of those teams was the formation of the New York Mets in 1962. Their stadium was Shea Stadium after attorney William Shea. Now the Mets are often seen as New York's team, the team in the city. Whereas the Yankees were the global worldwide team, their, their brand, think of it like the Dallas Cowboys in the NFL. That's what the New York Yankees were. While the, the Mets were just seen as like, it's purely New York's team. Now, now the, the Braves and the Athletics would again move locations, mostly due to financial issues. The Braves would leave Milwaukee in 1990, in 1966, and become the the Atlanta Braves, and the and the Athletics would move from Kansas City to Oakland in 1968, becoming the Oakland Athletics. Now, as a result of those two teams moving, both those teams would gain replacement teams. The Milwaukee Brewers, after the Seattle Pilots were an expansion team, 1969, and full after one year, and the Kansas City Royals. So. Milwaukee and Kansas City end up getting replacement teams as a result of the, of the Braves and Athletics moving. Now, when we get back, we're going to talk about what the legacy was of this expansion here on History Now, here on ONTV. A promise was made, a promise that hit the beaches of Normandy, a vow that captured Iwo Jima, a contract that weathered Tet, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans. DAV fights to keep that promise, so all veterans and their families get the benefits and support they earn. For help, visit DAV.org. Welcome back to History Now. Yeah, I'm your host, Anthony Termina. Um, before we get to start talking about the legacy of of the expansion for Major League Baseball. Um, I want to talk about a few more moves that happened before the um, before we talk about what the legacy was and the changes were. Um, I want to get back to you about talking about the Washington Senators because at that time Washington was still considering moving and um, ultimately in 1961 they would the original Washington Senators would move to Minneapolis and become the Minnesota Twins. Well, as a result, you know how the deal was: if if an original team leaves and the the former town where they were at, they get a new team. So what happened was a new team came in, and guess what their name was? The Washington Senators. Okay, so they created an expansion team and named it the Washington Senators. Okay, this team would only last for about 11 years as the Washington Senators would move to Arlington and become the Texas Rangers in 1972. Now, Washington would not get another expansion team until the Nationals came, came around. And as a result, the, the Washington did not have a baseball team until the until the late uh, until until the two, uh, 20 teens when um when the net, when they received the Washington Nationals. Now there were more expansion teams that came out. Um, other teams were struggling with with um financial issues. Um, 
So the Giants, the White Sox, and the Pirates all threatened to move their teams because of financial issues, which didn't happen. But the areas where they threatened to move to each received expansion teams, which was the Toronto Blue Jays, the Colorado Rockies, and the Montreal Expos. Um, eventually, you would see other teams begin to form, like the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, the Washington Senators, um, or in the Washington Nationals, excuse me, not the Senators. Um, but I mean it. So you would see that teams are starting to grow and grow and grow. The, the major leagues are starting to grow because it started off with those 16 teams. Now it's really, really grown to where there's right now 31 teams. The goal is to get to 32 teams. So from 1903 to 1952, so from no major league baseball team moved to a different city. But from 53 to 69, there were eight moves. The Boston moved to Milwaukee. The Braves moved to Milwaukee. The Browns moved to, the, to Baltimore, became the Orioles. The Athletics to Kansas City. The Giants to San Francisco. The Dodgers to Los Angeles. The Senators to, Minnesota, to Minneapolis became the Minnesota Twins. The new Senators... Then the Los Angeles Angels ended up creating expansion teams. In 1962, the Houston Colts, later renamed the Astros and the New York Mets, created expansion teams. In 1966, the Braves moved to Atlanta. Athletics moved to Oakland. And then you had the San Diego Padres, the Montreal Expos, the Kansas City Royals, Seattle Pilots created expansion teams. So... There were eight moves from 53 to 69, and this would still grow. So the legacy of all this, there were big changes to Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball became the top organization in baseball. You had other organizations as well at the time. You had the Negro League. They were from business from 1920 to 1951. You had the Cuban League from 1878 until 1961, where the Cuban Revolution pretty much forced the Cuban League to shut down. Um, the, you, had, you had more moves south and west. Um, the Arizona Diamondbacks, when I think of it, I think about it, they, they stand out. They're one of the newer franchises. Um, there were other leagues. Um, you also had the, the smaller leagues as well. Um, the Major League Baseball is still considering expansion to this day. Um, they also want to continue to expand to 32 teams. Right now they're at 31. Um, there, there is the return to Montreal. The Montreal Expos left for Tampa in the early 2000s. Um, there's, there's, this, there's a big move to try to get uh, baseball team to Tampa. They wanted to expand. They want. They still want to expand to 32 teams, but we'll find out what happens. Um, I know there's been a lot of calls to bring a team back to Montreal or to create an expansion team. Well, we're going to see what happens. Um, but as I, as I said, from 1903 to 1952, there were just those 16 teams. Look at it today: 31 teams all over the country, all over the United States, in Canada. And uh, it's just amazing to see how far baseball, Major League Baseball has, um, has grown. Just like all the other leagues, the National Basketball Association, the National Hockey League, um, soccer. Um, I mean, it's just fascinating to see how much Major League Baseball has grown in, in the, from, the, from back then, from till the 50s, until today. All right, well, that'll do it for this episode of History Now. Um, I will talk to you guys soon. You guys take care and see you soon.